Just imagine creating a fully functional web app like this without any coding experience. I have written very little of this code by hand. It's really all come from questions and prompts on AI. These tools are smarter and more efficient than what you could do by hand coding. You can get 100 or 200 lines of perfectly functional code and then go through it line by line and see how it's working. And you really condense that learning time by a ton. So this is no doubt going to turn non-developers into tech entrepreneurs in the future. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I took a spreadsheet that I had been using to track my workouts and turned it into this much better looking web app in just a couple of weeks. So this was my starting point. I started tracking my workouts, as you can tell here, back in, let's see the first date, November of 2016. This is just showing the number of days in the month that I did a workout. And then over here in the month tab, I have a drop down where I select an exercise and it shows you the totals, the monthly totals for that specific exercise. All these numbers are coming from the left here where I'm summing up the individual workouts by month. And where I log my workouts is this day tab. So I just come in here and if I scroll down, you'll see how many rows are in this. I'm up to about 4,444 rows. <laughs> so this kind of lends itself to a database oriented project. So that's what I wanted to do, build a web app with the database. And then I also have this list tab, which these are all the various exercises sizes that I've done over the years. And I also have a Google Sheets formula to calculate the max for the set, the day, and the month. So I started off by using a newer AI tool. I just had heard about this in the last maybe month or two called Claude. It operates pretty much the same as ChatGPT. All these tools are really just kind of chat windows like this, but it gives a few advantages. And the main one is that it's better at writing code. It's a little bit smarter and you can give it screenshots. So all I did, you can see here, was in my initial prompt, I provided three screenshots of my spreadsheet. I gave it a screenshot of the lists tab, a screenshot of the monthly performance, and then a screenshot of the exercises list. And here is my exact prompt. I have a spreadsheet to log my workouts. I'd like to turn this into a web app. I will provide three screenshots. One's a list of all the exercises with the max number of reps for set day and month. One is a sheet where I log the daily workouts with the date, including a drop down to select a specific exercise. The last is a monthly performance chart where I can select the exercise and it'll live update to show my monthly reps for that specific exercise and update the chart. Can you create skeleton code to turn this into a web app using PHP, jQuery, JavaScript, and MySQL? And I specifically chose those programming languages because I come from working with WordPress. So pretty much all the customization that I've done is through this coding stack. Now, if you didn't give it that last line, it would probably give you a different coding language. And right away, it gives you the correct code. So it starts with the basics, and that's the database. It gives you the SQL code that you can copy and paste into MySQL or into PHP MyAdmin to create this database for you with the correct columns. Now, if you've never set up a website before, anytime you have a web host, you can usually create MySQL databases on that web host. Next up, we have our PHP files. So we have our main index.php. This is what's going to show up when we load our home page. And you can see here in the PHP code, it's including two other PHP files, db underscore connect. So this is the database credentials. This is where you're going to store your database name, username, and password. So you can connect to that database and add or select from it. And then you got your functions.php, which this is going to include functions that will dynamically insert content from the database into your website. You can see how simple this code is. The body is just right here. All you got is a heading, navigation. Each one of these navigation elements has an ID. So you're going to be able to load the content by clicking on these navigation elements. And that content is going to dynamically be inserted into this content div. Now here's your database connect PHP file. Like I just mentioned, that's where you store your credentials and you create a database connection in PHP. Now this is literally the bare basics of setting up a web app. I mean, how long would this have taken you if you were doing it from scratch and you didn't know any better? It's kind of crazy how amazing this is to get set up with a framework of code that you can build off of. And the real important one is this functions.php. So immediately they create a handful of functions. You got get exercises and you can see this is the SQL statement, select everything from the exercises table. So this is going to get our list of exercises, which we have right over here. You got your log workout function, which that takes a few variables here, date, exercise ID, total reps, set one, set two, set three. And then here's a more difficult one, get monthly performance. So this is what gets the monthly totals that are displayed within 
this chart that I showed you over here. It's just a monthly reps for that one specific exercise. So you can see this code, it asks for an exercise ID. You input that within the function and it generates this SQL code, which this is what selects from the database and gives you that data in the correct format. Now, I have only used SQL code probably a handful of times, but you can see this syntax. I mean, I would have no idea how this worked. And I think it's just amazing that it'll generate this code with the perfect syntax and you don't have to lift a finger. And one other thing I want to mention here, I'm kind of giving you just a broad overview of how to do this. I'm not going into the step by step. I did have to debug a couple of things and I, I could be wrong, but I know one of these bind parameter function calls, which by the way, I had never used, had no idea what it was. I had to look it up, but this is what links up your variables into the SQL statement. So up here, if I scroll over, you'll see these question marks. So all of these question marks are linked up to these variables within this bind parameter statement. And right here, it's asking for the type. So S means it's a string. That means the first one's a string. The I means the next one's an integer and so on. And on one of these, there was the incorrect number of I's. So it, it didn't link up with the number of variables in this function. So that was one little error I had to fix. Normally you can present the error to this AI tool and it'll fix it for you. So you might not even have to do that yourself, but I just wanted to mention that. And then if we scroll down here, next up we have our JavaScript. So this gives us the interactivity. Basically, this is binding a click of this element to show exercises. So this is our navigation. When you click that nav button, it's gonna run one of these functions here, depending on which nav button you clicked. You got show exercises, show log, show chart. And then what we're doing here is we're actually running what's known as Ajax. And that's what sends information from your browser back to the web server on a live website so that it doesn't have to refresh. This is what makes websites dynamic. So we have these PHP files, get exercises.php, log workout form.php. And that is what generates the content on each of these pages. So when I click a button here, it's going to call one of those PHP files. The PHP file is going to get the information from the database and then send it back to the browser and display it here. And then going further down, we have our submit button here. So this is for the log workout form. When I click this button, it's going to send that form data to this log workout, that PHP. And then this is what's going to put it into the database. And then we are alerted. This is what gives you that little pop-up window within your browser the alert at the top, and it'll tell you whether or not it was successful. And we also have the exercise select button. So this is what's going to show different data on our chart. You can see that this is just the drop down here. And then when we select the different exercise, it gives us those values on the chart below. Now in this first prompt, it didn't actually give me the way to generate the chart. So you can see it's calling this update chart function that's down here. And then it just says implement your chart logic here and gives you the example of using chart.js, which I believe is an open source HTML framework for creating charts. And these files up here, these PHP files, they give you the additional ones right down here. So again, going into this flow, somebody clicks, for instance, the show exercises button. So when that click happens on the show exercises button, it's going to ask for information from getexercises.php. This is getexercises.php. It's going to connect to the database. It's going to include all our functions, and we're going to call this function getExercises. And whatever is returned from this is saved to the exercises variable. GetExercises is in our functions.php. This is where it selects everything from that exercises table, and it returns it as an associative array. And that is what's stored in here. And then down here, we're writing the HTML for a table and then using a PHP for each loop to go through each of the exercises and show the name, the category, the max set, the max day, and the max month. Once again, that is what is displayed on the exercises tab right here. And then you got log workout form.php. So this is going to create the form element. And another thing that I ended up changing here is the total reps. There's really no need for this. All I would have to do would be to sum set one, two, and three. And the same thing with the database. I had a column in the database for total reps. I eliminated that because that can be calculated within the SQL code just by summing these three sets. So that was another little change that I made. I think I've done maybe three or four little versions so far. So here's logworkout.php, performancechart.php. You can see in here they're linking up that chart.js and they commented out the actual rendering of the chart or how to implement that. So as you can guess, that's 
my next follow-up. I want to know how to do the chart. But before I did that, my next question was, give me the SQL code to insert the exercises from the spreadsheet into the database. So if we look at the screenshot I gave it, these are all my exercises. So it read this information from the screenshot and it gave me this code, which automatically puts them into the database. I just copy and pasted this code into PHP MyAdmin to do that. And it tells you right here the instructions on how to do it as well if you don't know what I'm talking about. Now, here's a great example of debugging. One issue on the first test is that logging a workout failed. And I was assuming that it had something to do with this log workout function. So I asked to explain the potential causes that it didn't work and explain the code. So this is where the learning comes into play, where it's going to give you most of the code, 90 to 95 percent of the code. But there might be some little things that you have to look into. And again, it can help you with it. It's not just you figuring it out on yourself. You can ask you questions. And this was, I believe, the one where the bind parameter thing didn't match up. I think I might have figured it out before I even read this. But it says there's a mismatch between the number of placeholders, the question marks in this statement up here, with the number of parameters in the bind parameter. So it's actually kind of surprising that it didn't render that correctly in the first place, but at least it figured it out by asking the follow-up question. And then they also gave me some information about how to get more information to debug. So on your server, you're gonna get a PHP error log. That's just a file on your web server Anytime an error happens, it'll go to that log and you can go into there and it's going to tell you where that log, or I'm sorry, where that error originated from. So that's really helpful. The next question I asked was about the chart. Can you please provide the code to implement chart initialization and update chart function? So I'm building off the exact verbiage that they used within the comment, the chart initialization, and the function that they created. So within performance chart.php, the way this works is you create a canvas. This is the only HTML that you have to create and everything else is done through JavaScript. So this is the jQuery in order to initialize the chart. You can see this is the line creating the chart, new chart function. And this chart object is available to us because we include the library chart.js within this line. And you can see it's doing the setup for us here with all these settings, total reps, the label, the data right now is blank, but we're going to update that with JavaScript. And now it gives us the function that we call update chart to initialize it. And then anytime that dropdown changes, that's what this dot change dot function is. It will update the chart with the new data from whatever exercise was selected. And then here we have the Ajax from the update chart function. We're sending the exercise ID to this PHP file, get performance data.php, and it's going to return that data. That's what happens here with the success function. You got your data being sent through this variable. And you can see from this variable, it's grabbing the month and the number of total reps and setting that within our chart object. And with all this code, they're giving you a little breakdown of it, which is very helpful. Now, obviously, I didn't want to have to log my workouts one by one here. As I just showed you, I have about 4,000 rows of workouts. So what's the next logical way to add workouts? Well, it's in a spreadsheet, so I can upload a CSV. I asked to create this functionality. My prompt was, can you add integration based off the log workout form, where you include an option to upload a CSV to log multiple workouts to the database? Please use the existing PHP files you've created as the base and add to them with any new code or functions. So they're going ahead and modifying this log workout form.php. Here's our CSV code. And then we have the jQuery code in order to send this CSV data to another PHP file. Of course, they're going to give us that code next. It's another thing I've never done before. I never have written raw code to upload a CSV file. And this one worked perfectly. They got another function to add here to my functions.php. And then they updated the log workout function, which this is what inserts it into the database. And they just had a way to handle potential errors. So I think this was just adding like an if statement along with something to the error log. And last but not least, they give you the format that the CSV file should look. So what do you think? I mean, this is like mind-blowing stuff. It's ridiculous how good this works when you have a specific goal in mind. So the next question I ask here, can you add a button to get exercises.php under the table with the text plus add exercise and update functions.php or create a new file to add that exercise to the database? So that was this feature. If I scroll down here below the table, we got the new exercise button. If I click that, it brings up a form, and this will add it right to the database into this table. Then the next thing I asked to update here was to add the feature of including multiple exercises for one day. To do this, make a plus exercise button that when clicked adds more form inputs, and then update log workout.php to process 
adding multiple exercises on one day. And if I go to this workouts page here, that's what this button does. You got your new exercises that you can log. And if you don't need this one, you can click the remove row button. I then copy and paste the HTML output that they gave me for the show log page. And I include that specific ID. And I ask it to act as a professional designer and give me CSS code to style both the header as well as the content area with the various inputs. And it gives me that code, which I can just copy and paste and play around with that within Google Inspector. And then asking for that CSS code was the last thing that I got to on here. At that point, I reached my limit on this conversation. And on top of that, I think Claude only gives you five or six prompts at a time before they limit you. So you usually have to wait for maybe four or five hours after you hit that limit. It definitely has a lower limit than ChatGPT. So what I was doing was kind of going back and forth and just taking the chunks of code that I wanted to edit, or if I just had one section that I wanted to style, I was using ChatGPT or Google Gemini and kind of alternating between them, both to see the quality of the response, along with just solving these minor problems in more of a distributed way. Now, I know with Claude, when you upgrade under their pro version, they have a feature which I don't think right now is included with ChatGPT. I could be wrong, there might be plugins that do it, but that is to create projects to work with the AI around a set of docs, code, or files. And this is where I started adding little features. So for instance, that first version didn't have any metrics. I added all these metrics one by one. But as you can guess, I didn't design this. I asked for it to do a metrics panel with this specific grid layout. And I just tweaked the CSS a tiny bit after it gave me that. I specifically asked to use emojis, but then after it, I had this monthly progress, which I figured it'd be cool to do a pie chart. So this is actually an SVG. I got the full SVG code that dynamically through PHP adds the 23% value to the SVG code. So it tells it what percentage to show here. And there's a function that gives us all of these metrics. It calculates the current streak of workout days, the longest streak that you've had of workout days, along with last month's top exercise, which the way I did this was simply compare the number of total reps that you did for each exercise against the max for that exercise. So basically, if you hit your max or go over your max in an exercise in one month, that's gonna be your top exercise. Now, this is one that I'm still working on, the improvement score. I don't quite know what I'm gonna do for this, or I might end up changing this metric, but I've pretty much transitioned to using this app as opposed to the spreadsheet. This is another feature that I added recently that I kind of divided up between the AI services, and it's just the pill button, you know, selector to show both the log and the list of workouts. This is another function I added, being able to delete a workout. So this is just showing the workouts from the last two weeks. And here's a little CSS that I added to make it show red when you hover over that delete button. So I really want this video to inspire you. I didn't specifically go through the code and do it in real time because I want you to pursue whatever you wanna do, not rebuild what I just did. I'm considering launching this as a paid project. Because like I said, I've been tracking my workouts for almost a decade now, and I'm going to continue to do that. I know other people might want to do it. So if you think you might have an interest in using this, check out the description below, or I'll link up in the top right here where you can join my email list, and I'll keep you updated and posted if I decide to launch this. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, or if you have any questions or feedback on this video, I'd be interested to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll link up a few other videos here if you want to keep on learning.